Industry Insider coming to you from Big Sound 2012. We're here at the Judas Wright Centre, uh, brought to you by Jay Dillon, and joining me, uh, Blues Fest Director Peter Noble. Thank you so much for giving us your time, Peter. I know you're always flat out at these things, and uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have a chat with you. Thank you, Ben. Well, I guess I'm a bit of an outsider or an outlier, yeah. but, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to be with the insider. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much. I'm going to use that. That's fantastic. Now, um, uh, Peter... Uh, Bumped into you last night at the Country Showcase and we were just talking beforehand uh, about uh, some of the great artists that you've seen at Big Sound already. Do you want to... Who, who, who have you spotted that's uh, taken your fancy so far? Well, at the Country Showcase, I thought the Menemans was just really wonderful to, to see a family band, even though it's only a duo, hear those harmonies and the beautiful real instruments, you know, stringed instruments. Um, they've applied, I can't tell you how many times to play at Blues Fest with a CD. And I didn't get it off the CD. Yeah. So I probably knocked them back four or five times. And I saw that show last night and I went like... I was actually walking out the door. Yeah. And they pulled me back in, they were that good. And, and I just stood around and watched it and went like, that's some beautiful music. Mm. Nice to hear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and you also, uh, I said, uh, the EMI showcase, you spotted uh, Grey Ghost, was it, last night? Yeah, Grey Ghost is a band that, you know, sure they got beats and everything else going, but it's kind of world and it's, it's rapping, singing, but... It reminds me of Franny. Yeah. It reminds me of Michael Franny. It reminds me of Cat Empire in the early days. Um, you know, they got their own thing, but it's just, it's just got that ability. I, I, I could see that band in a big festival, just whole crowd, just having a ball, yeah. jumping, you know? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I happened to be standing with a couple other people there. We go from the agency group in Canada. And, I could just see his eyes light up and go like, where's the manager? Yeah, 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 yeah right. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Now, um, Peter, Peter um, Industry Insider, we'd like... You might want to wait a sec. Oh, no, that's, that's OK. We'll be, we'll be all right, we'll be all right. Now, um, uh, with Industry Insider, we like to, when we sit down on camera, we like to have a chat with you about uh, how you got into the business and how you started. Could you fill us in a little bit on, on, on how you got to where you are? Oh, look, I, I think like most of us, we grow up and we and we listen to our parents' record collection. Yeah. Or, our, if we're, like me, was the youngest guy in my family, kid, uh, my big brother's record collection. Yeah. And there was a time in the 50s when, uh, you know, these records were actually hitting the charts by, like, Little Richard and Jerry Lee Lewis and Fats Domino and Huey Piano Smith and the Clowns and Joni Reynolds and the Storm. And, so, and I could go on. Yeah. And I just fell in love with all that Southern music, you know, that... New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, I never realized, you know, how many of those people came from the same place. Yeah. If you go back there to the, like, Fats Domino and Little Richard, and they, all, they all even cut the same recording studio with the same band. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it just all, some way got into my DNA, that, that Southern music, yeah. you know? And, uh, yeah, and, and, um, and then as I got a bit older, you know, living in Australia and Sydney, the Beatles come out, and then the, all the big British beat invasion, and the Stones, and all that. The 60s, and everybody wanted to grow their hair long, pick up a guitar, and get a steal on the next guy and get a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're in a band. Yeah. And yes, sir, I did all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, Sydney. Sydney would have been an interesting place when uh, in that in that part of your life. It was amazing because back then, um, all these people were coming out from England. They called the Ten Pound Ponds. Yeah. And they'd all come out for 10 pounds if they stayed in Australia for two years. Uh, but then they didn't have to pay, you know, full money or re re repay the government for what it cost to bring them out here because we needed workers back then. And so they all stayed at the uh, same hostel that the uh, boat people, I think, get put into nowadays, and people like that out of Billowood. And they all spread down that railway line, Burwood and Croydon and places like that. And so that's where the guys from the Easy Beats yeah, yeah. and later on ACDC and Burwood or... Uh, John English, you know, same area. My, I was the only Australian, like, in an all-English band in the 60s. Man, I had it made, you know, and um, with everybody with my band, I just emigrated to Australia. And, and they just, they just seemed to have that thing, well, you know, that was just England ruled the world then, and they had bands like The Who, and, you know, these amazing bands, and, and we just used to go and uh, tear it up, you know, yeah. just go out there and and, and, I, and I used to go like, you know, I was just an, an Aussie, you know, I wear shorts and, you know what I mean, and thongs and uh, flip flops, you want to call them. And, and these guys like dressed, you know? Mm. 
And you, you, it was not like you walk on stage and you're dressed. If you're in a band, you are dressed. Yeah. For the minute you get out of bed. Right. Because you're a rock star. Yeah. Oh, you, oh, and if you walk around looking like you're a slob, well, guess what? That's what you actually are. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> and uh, we used to actually, there used to be a, some stores in Sydney like John and Maryvale. And we used to actually go and play there on Saturday mornings after playing at 2 or 3 o'clock that last night before, just for clothes. You know, we played just piercing clothes. Mm, yeah, right. And, uh, yeah, and so I guess all those crazy Englishmen and one Scotsman who uh, went on to form a band called Sherbet, um, they just taught me all that stuff about, you know, if you want to be in this business, look like you're in it. Right, that's, that's great advice. That's great yeah. advice. And it's like if you want to stand on the stage, no one paid you to look at your shoes. Yeah, yeah. So, where, Peter, uh, where did you get into uh, the, the festival promotion and, and, and putting on events? Where, what part of that life, what part of your life did that start? Oh, I moved to the US in the 70s and uh, I was still a musician working there and playing in the US and Canada. And um, I got fired out of the band, you know, and they kind of dropped me at the side of the road in Portland, Oregon, you know, and said, like, nice knowing you. Yeah. And, uh, uh, so I got a job in something like Skipper's Fish and Chips, you know, like a fast food place, you know, like cleaning the floor. And, and, uh, and I walked downtown and I saw this sign that said American Entertainment. And I walked in and I said to this guy, look, I've been trip touring with this band all over like the Midwest and Canada. And, and uh, I can book bands. You just need to buy me a hotel room. Because <laughs> I got no way to live. <laughs> and breakfast. And... Um, God bless him, he did, and uh, and then he, you know, he picked my brain, and 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 because I, you know, I knew how to get bands out on the road, you know, that was what I was always good at, being the guy in the band that talked with the agents, you know, every band needs one, yeah. and um, and pretty soon he he bankrolled me to put on BB King, so you know, here I was like a year into my promoting career, promoting BB King, you know, yeah. and um, and then after that I came back to Australia and became like the promoter here of all the really alternate stuff, you know, like reggae and jazz and um, blues and, and uh, yeah, even bands like Ramones and Any No Way League and lots of punk and residents and stuff like that. And then one guy, one guy, and I moved out to Byron Bay and then one guy goes, who got the, the original Byron Bay Blues Fest, it's happening in a club, you know, and he called me up and he said, well, you're the guy that does all this alt sort of bluesy indie stuff and, uh, I'm going outdoors, and uh, you want to be my partner, and uh, and I did, and uh, and then over the years we built it up, and then I bought him out. So um, that's it in a nutshell, basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.